Marhaba, and welcome to the Matrix Green Pill, where real people connect. Hello, and welcome back to the Matrix Green Pill podcast. Shireen here with you today as your host. The guest that's joining me today is Hamda Tariam a 22-year-old Emirati bike and car racer who was also a part of Netflix's first Arabic-language reality series, The Fastest. She is also the president and founder of Hamda's Foundation, a philanthropist, entrepreneur, and a drifter. Hamda, welcome, and thank you so much for joining me today. I love the description or bio. Hi. Hi. Yes. Well, you've done so much. So let's start off. Could you please give us a little background information about yourself and your life here in the UAE? As she said, I'm a 22-year-old Emati. I do racing, but I do charity work. I don't do one specific thing for life. I'm balancing between my lifestyle and my hobbies and my work environment. So you could say that I have like 13 different characters. It depends on the day. I can be professional or I can be drifting in the streets or racing someone in the track. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Tell us how did you decide to get into racing? And has that always been something you wanted to do? Racing, I actually did not start as a racer. It all started when I was 14. When I got my first car, I started going to the desert. So I started breaking my car. And then me breaking my car introduced me to a lot of garages and workshops in the UAE. I built my experiences by breaking my cars, by going to other garages and then learning other stuff from them. It started there and I ended up now, you can say not having my own workshop, but next year I'll be having my own workshop. As I said, I never started as a racing field. I started as just a small girl enjoying her cars in the desert and on track. And then uh, Netflix uh, talked to me about this reality TV show. It's a drag racing show. When they talked to me, I just got my motorcycle racing uh, license because I was on track with the motorcycle. So I became a motorcycle racer and a truck racer in the same time by coincidence. So it kind of just happened by time. Like I didn't choose it. It kind of chose me. It sounds like that's exactly what happened that, you know, it was something that was almost fate. Yeah, it was unexpected. Yeah. It's a really nice field to be in. We all share the same passion, but it's weird in this field. It's just that we agree that we disagree. When you mention breaking your car, do you mean like physically damaging the car? Or is that another term that maybe I'm not familiar with? No, no, no. Physically damaging the car. Okay. So you were breaking your car and taking it to the garage and learning how to fix the cars through that process. Yeah. I learned about cars throughout mistakes that I've been through in the desert and on the streets while breaking the cars. It just built up somehow throughout the years. Like I started at 14 and I'm 22 now. So all these years in between, I was overloading my brain with information about cars. And now like I know too much, but I love it. Amazing. 14 is so young. Yeah, it was crazy. I always loved cars, but I didn't have a job. It was an exhibition for three days. And then I got my first car. It was a very old Jeep Cherokee, but it started there. Wow. So you actually earned your way and bought your own car. That's amazing. I always love buying my own because I'll feel bad if someone got me something and I go and break it. It just doesn't sit right with me. Okay. And um, would you say there are any like physical challenges that you had to go through and prepare yourself in order to become a rider or a racer? Uh, yeah. For becoming a motorcycle racer, you really need to take care of your health, including sleep and what you eat. And even by the way, when it comes to mental health, you really have to take care of yourself to be able to compete with others because you have to be 100% with yourself and accept the way you are or it will affect the races somehow. Wow. Okay. So you can't be insecure. You can't have that kind of thing clouding your judgment. Yeah. No, you really have to be like not 100% confident, but at least equal with yourself. You can't just ask yourself, uh, are you able to enter this race or not? But you can get to ask yourself, are you able to compete in this race the way you competed in the last one? Even the thinking has to change. I never expected this, honestly, but it did fix a lot of things in me while I was getting 
prepared for this race because it made me take care of my health even more, my sleeping, my even the people around me. I removed myself from everyone negative in my life. It was the best thing I ever did. And in terms of physical aspect, you have to like work out and keep fit to a certain extent? Yeah, you need some type of training because you do... It's based 30%, the bike does it for you. But you and the bike and races are one. So you have to be fit for these races because there are specific body positions for specific corners on track. And you should know it. Wow. Okay. You kept mentioning a specific race. Would you say you have a favorite one that you've done so far? My favorite are track racing where you have the curves and then you just lean down until your knees and elbows touch the ground. That's how close you are to the ground with the motorcycle. Oh my gosh, that sounds dangerous. It is quite dangerous. and I've had many crashes on track, but Uh, because we have the leather safety and we have the back protection and all of this. So this boosts kind of some type of confidence that you may injure yourself, but not the way you'll injure yourself on the streets. Because I don't wear safe streets, but on track, it's mandatory. Like you don't have a choice, but wear full safety and full leather. I guess my next question is a bit more deep. So to tackle kind of the whole gender stereotype, did you have to go through some barriers and break through them because you are a woman? I really believe that God was training me ever since I was young. Even back in the days when I was 15, 16, like, how are you a girl in this field and you love cars and you love modifying cars and all of this? But it took me a while to accept the negativity and not give them the energy they're asking for. So it doesn't push me down and then blocks me from my passion. Somehow I felt like God was training me all these years for now. But the world is weird and it changes every day. The weird thing is I'm accepted in this field right now in a very crazy way to the point where us, like other garages, are are shocked on how people or the way they accepted me in this field is is quite weird because every single time a girl enters this field and she knows what she's doing, people just push her down. But the world is actually becoming a better place, which is kind of, maybe we're not used to this positivity or maybe I'm not used to it. But you can say that people who push me down these days are like 8%. Like it's nothing out of 100%, Yani, which is almost nothing. Yeah, absolutely. You've been kind of lucky to be accepted. Don't call it luck, but I can say that I'm blessed. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's really good to hear that you feel that way. It's, It's difficult to constantly be pushed down, even though you are good at what you do just because of your gender. Yeah, it's nice now. People accept other passions more than before and they accept what other people love and they respect it as well. So that's a really nice thing. Honestly, I blame COVID because of this, why people became better. Like I have my own analysis about COVID. You think that COVID is the reason that people started to improve their thinking? Yeah, because you see when COVID came to us or when the pandemic happened, it changed the world, basically. They told everyone to stay in a box. I've always loved sitting with my thoughts, so it wasn't something really bad for me. But other people get involved, you know, with their jobs, with their lives, and they have other habits that remove them from their thoughts or don't let them think the way they're supposed to be. But COVID put everyone in a spot where they have no choice but to sit with their thoughts basically restructure their whole lives because they don't have another choice but sit with the negative thoughts and the positive. So they had to deal with the negative so they can feel the positive. It's weird, but I really believe that COVID fixed a lot in the world. Yes, it did do a lot of damage. I did fall into a coma from COVID, but still, like, I do believe that COVID fixed a lot of things. Wait a minute, you fell into a coma from COVID? Would you be able to share a little bit more about that? Yeah, I battled with my health ever since I was young. And it's not something new to me. I was doing chemotherapy in 2019. 
So my immune system was quite low. And then my doctor just put me on the spot. She's like, we can't complete your treatment because if you got COVID, it's the end for you. Once we canceled, once I stopped all the chemo, two months later, I got COVID on February 2020. I think I was the first patient in UAE. Because of the chemo, my immune was low. And then it led me, my lungs collapsed basically when I got it. I believe that God gave me another chance from the prayers in Uganda because I do work with people there. I'm charity work. Before I fall into my coma, I think you're aware of the hospital I built. If not, there was this hospital that I was building at that time. I collected like 70% of the cash and I sent it all and I told them, guys, I really feel like I'm, I don't think I'm going to be able to fight this. Just in case you complete the building for me if I couldn't make it out. After I said this, exactly three hours after it, I fell into a coma. And then I woke up the next week. Wow, that's super surreal. Now I'm fully recovered, thank God. I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. That sounds pretty scary. No, it's fine. It Honestly, it is. I wouldn't change any of it because it made me the person I am today. And I mean, for sure, you sound incredibly strong talking about it. It's something that happened a really, really long time ago, even though that was, what, only a year ago. Yeah, I get over things quite fast. I've been working on myself all these years. Goes hand in hand with your racing fast and getting over things fast. I became a racer after this experience. I mean, it's incredible and I don't know how you do it, but I do want to talk about all the humanitarian work that you keep mentioning that I want to tackle. So obviously, apart from being an exceptional writer, you do some non-for-profit work and that you were also, as you mentioned, in Uganda doing some work. Do you mind sharing that journey with us and kind of like, why did you choose Uganda? I've always loved helping people, always. It doesn't really matter if... If it's like donations or just like having a chat with someone else. Me, when I talk to someone, I give them all of myself. I'm there 100%. Yeah, you're very open. I can feel that from this conversation already, that you're not someone that really cares or hides things about who they are or what they've gone through. No, because everyone goes through these things, like not specifically the same, but something we all go through are life struggles and we sometimes need someone or inspiration on it doesn't really have to be the same struggle it's just the coping mechanism that how do you go through it how do you fix your thinking into not falling into deep thoughts and then get stuck in that negativity that no one wants how do you like realize to attack your thoughts before they take control of yourself because we're in power of almost everything that we go through in our lives we aren't in, con in control. If you see it that way and if you believe it that way, everything you want is actually possible. Yeah, I completely agree with you. They say that all the time, that we are our biggest obstacles. Yeah, because it's always, it's just in our head. Our brain, and this is scientific proven, our brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. Our brain is in a box. So sometimes we imagine things that we believe and things that we made up in our thoughts. Other people believe it as well. Yet it was just in this box of ours that is covered, basically. So the human brain doesn't know between reality and it's on us to see it or to realize between this and this because it will eat you alive if you fall into that phase where you're stuck with your thoughts and you can't get out. The faster you realize about it, the faster you get out of it. And this is how I get over things fast. I'm aware that I'm going into something hard. It's up to myself if I should get myself out of it or slow. But it really depends on us. If we really want to fix ourselves and if we put the energy into it, it works every single time. All we have to do is just realize. That's it. I agree with you. Scrolling through Instagram, and I found this charity foundation. It was based in Uganda. I saw that they needed help reconstructing a school for orphans. They didn't have the money for it. So I helped them with the school to reopen. A woman from that school was supposed to, was giving birth on my birthday in 2019. She told me that she's going to name her child after me. 
as a way of her thanking me for all the work I did for them. Oh, that's so sweet. Sadly, that woman didn't make it and the baby didn't make it, both of them, while she was giving birth. Why, you ask? Because she gave birth on the ground and they were not doctors and they don't have even any vehicles so they can take her to any close medical clinic because they were specifically in that town. So that lady made me restructure or reconsider my life of the things that I was because I did sacrifice a lot of things. I felt like God didn't let this just happen for me to stay quiet or for me to not help or anything. I really believe that I actually had a mission and I was supposed to go through that with that lady and she was supposed to lose her life, which caused her or which caused me to buy land and build a hospital in 10 months. And now you can say we have 27 baby hamdas that we know about that was born or they were born in my medical clinic and they named them after me. And these are the baby hamdas that we know about. So it's like, yes, she did lose her life and she did lose her baby's life, but she opened doors for hundreds of thousands of lives. My hospital only has eight patient rooms, but it did help hundreds of thousands of people there because it was the first medical clinic open specifically in that town. That sums up why I got the hospital done for them. It's such a touching and sad story. But of course, I love that you find the positivity in it and that it wasn't something taken for granted and that you took it as inspiration to do something more. Yeah, because I taught myself this ever since I was young. I just called them as it's... A lesson for us. It's like another choice or opportunity for us to develop whatever is coming for the future. This is how I take them. So you can say that I do find the positivity out of almost everything that I go through. Some people may see the things that I go through are like hard and negative, all of this, but I see them as like something that will teach me things for the long term, which is like a new type of way of thinking into. You can't always be positive, but you can keep your energy high. You don't have to always be happy because we all go through these things, but we should control ourselves into just not to fall in that negative phase where you feel like the world is closing on you, your passion is gone. And Because failure does take you there. But when you take failure as a new opportunity for you to develop your skills, that's another story. You never feel again in your life. I feel like you have a lot of wisdom to share at such a young age because of the many experiences that you have gone through already. And that's really amazing. I mean, you should really be proud of all your accomplishments apart from what you do professionally and all the work that you're doing for other people. This is one of the reasons why I'm starting my podcast next year. Oh, wow. Okay. So you have a lot of exciting things for next year. Because I really believe that I have a lot to share that will help people, even though, you know, I'm this 22 year old, but I do want to share my techniques to the world because I really not just believe, I see people around me, like after they talk to me, when I give them, I don't just ISIS, I just tell them my experiences and this somehow gives them this feeling that you're not alone going through struggles in life. We're all having like hard and easy lives together. So when you see someone else talking about it and then ending it up in a positive way, this gives the other person confidence that no, it's not the end for them. It's just a failure that you went through and then you get to choose if you want to keep failing and taking them as failures and you get to choose if you want to keep failing and then coming back competing with yourself so you don't fail the same way again. You can fail in something else and then you can develop your skills again throughout those struggles. So it's like something we can all relate in because we're all in here together. We're supposed to work here together. We're supposed to learn from each other. No one is supposed to be like, oh yeah, I'm the leader and I, I can't get any advices from anywhere, anyone else. You never stop learning on earth. You learn things every single day. I'm an example for people who are close-minded about young people that they don't know this or this and this. Then why are you guys learning from me? And then listening to me, age doesn't really matter. Wisdom is wisdom. Thinking is thinking. Just depends on the person themselves if they want to live life to the fist 
or they want to have an average life. Because you get to live every single day, but you get to die once. There are some incredible quotes that you have already shared that are like A-class motivational quotes right there. Thank you. I also want to talk about the Hamda Foundation, which I mentioned that you are a president and founder of. So could you share why you decided to start the foundation and what do you do with it? I started this foundation so other people can be able to donate. So I can build not just one hospital. I want to build like 10 hospitals at the same time. Doing it by myself, it's going to be a little harder for me and take more time. If I Now I have my own charity foundation. We're working on the website. People want to help and donate and give you their hand as well. I opened my charity foundation so I can help more people by working together. Because it's really hard to open a hospital by yourself, by your own money. It's a hustle. And I went through that hustle. Yes, I don't mind hustling, but if I can do it in an easier way, I can enjoy my lifestyle as well, yet still being able to help others. That's like something really nice for me. As I told you, I sacrificed a lot for this hospital. I sacrificed my house. So I learned how to balance the two. Yeah, and that's not an easy thing to do because, of course, you want to still be able to actually sustain yourself, but also give others. It shouldn't be at the, at the sacrifice of your own life, like you said. So, of course, it's not an easy thing to do and you, and you want the help of others because I'm sure there are a lot of other people that feel like they want to do more, but they don't know where to go, for example. And that's why foundations like yours are so important. Yeah, and sometimes you can't just trust any foundation, you know, because some people use these charity foundations not to donate. The money just goes to them. I couldn't trust, honestly, just any foundation because I really don't know their system. So I decided to start my own, something that is official, trusted and everything that's certified. And whoever donates, like the building or whatever they want to do, like a mosque and all of this, I even send them all the process. It's fast work. So if someone came to me and told me they want to build a mosque for their father, I can make it done in four months and send them the whole process. Because now I have connections with Uganda. And even Uganda is so hard for you to find trusted people who are not there to take your money. It's so hard. But thankfully, I fell into the right hands with who I work with over there. And they were doing it to actually help others. That's really great. It was nice. Yeah, of course. It's great that you found the right people that are on the same page as you. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing. We've actually come to the segment of our show where I'm going to ask you a couple of rapid fire questions. So just the first thing that pops into your mind, just answer that. Are you ready to play? Yeah. Okay. You mentioned that you know you have like 14, I don't know, personalities or characters. So apart from writing, <laughs> yeah. do you have any other favorite hobbies that you like to do? I don't know if you can call it hobbies, but it's the first thing that came to my mind, which is meditation. I love meditating. Maybe it's not a hobby, more like a lifestyle thing, but it, it's very interesting that you do that. And that probably explains why you know, you're know you so passionate about mental health and how you're so connected with yourself and all of that. Yeah, it does help a lot. Okay. What would you say is one thing on your bucket list? Is to have hospitals all around the world, nonprofit hospitals in the poorest places around the world. Amazing. And then this last one is, I guess what you've already said is that you do something every day. Apart from meditation, do you have anything else that you do just for yourself? Enjoy life. That's a great answer. Yeah. Just enjoy the day. And if you had something that made you sad yesterday, why would you really think about it today? Like, why do you want to live in the past if you're in, in the future? Not the future, if you're in the present. Not think about the future. Well, just be present with yourself and with the, your experiences. That's it. It's a great mindset to have. And um, just before we wrap up, I'd like to do our green pill moment segment. So could you share an inspiring or life-changing experience that you have gone through, which was your green pill moment? You can say it started negatively where I had one of my closest 
friends. You can say she backstabbed me in a very bad way where she made me hit rock bottom. That experience made me reevaluate myself with myself and how connected I am with myself. I kept on asking myself, how did a person make me feel so down yet I was working on myself throughout these years because I was giving my full self to everyone and then maybe expecting something from them. But I learned just not to expect anything in life, but to expect for a positive experience or expect even the negative experience to teach you something for the future so you don't fall in the same trap. So when that situation happened, when she backstabbed me, it made me reevaluate my friendships and how I view people and then how I view people. Or you can say that I didn't close the doors on everyone else that came to me after that girl. For example, like other new friendships. Because when we go through a, a friendship and then something bad happens, it automatically brainwashes us into viewing everyone else like that. Or it gives us these thoughts where there's this small voice in your head. What if this person does the same to you? This is another loophole for you that takes you to the darkness. That don't let negative experiences ruin your friendship or your future friendship with others. And this taught me not just about friendship, even about life. To not let the negative experiences ruin the new experiences. So don't expect what happened before is going to happen again because that will give you the power to manifest it for yourself. So if you just expect the unexpected, you're good. And don't let whatever something that you went through in the past make you live future that way because it was in the past. So why do you want to pull back something from the past? I think it's always hard when something like that happens with friends that you've trusted. It makes you question yourself and what you might have done for them to do something like that to you. You start questioning like, what did I do? Like, why do I deserve this? So of course, it's a very life-changing experience and I'm glad that you came out of it. Yeah, here's when you have to realize it fast enough. The faster you realize it, the faster you get out of it. Wow. Well, amazing. I mean, thank you so much for sharing your journey with me today. It was such a pleasure to speak to someone so young and inspiring other young people just like yourself. And just before we say goodbye, do you have any social media platforms that you would like to share where people could maybe follow you or get in touch with you through? Uh, my Instagram, which is uh, 7A for Alpha, M for Mariam, D for Delta, A for Alpha, E for Trees, and then 6. So it's Hamda T6. Perfect. Well, thank you so much again, Hamda, for joining me today. I wish you all the best with all your future plans. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share all of this. I'm really thankful for it. I enjoyed my time. It was a nice conversation. I'm glad. I really enjoyed it as well. Thank you. If you enjoy our conversations, please like and subscribe. See you next Wednesday.